Would our VIPs please be seated? Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Welcome all to this historical announcement by the Minister of National Defense. Before we begin, let me first introduce our VIPs. Mesdames et Messieurs, bienvenue à cette annonce historique du ministre de la Défense nationale. Avant de débuter, laissez-moi, s'il vous plaît, vous présenter nos invités de marque. Starting on my left, the Chief of the Air Staff, en commençant à ma gauche, le chef d'état-major de la Force aérienne, le lieutenant général André Deschamps. To his left, the Chief of the Land Staff, à sa gauche, le, le chef d'état-major de l'armée de terre, Major General Peter Devlin. To his left, the Chief of the Maritime Staff, à sa gauche, Correction, Lieutenant General Peter Devlin. To his left, the Chief of Maritime Staff, à sa gauche, le chef d'état-major de la Force maritime, Vice Admiral Paul Madison. To his left, the Minister of National Defense, the Honorable Peter McKay. À sa gauche, le Ministre de la Défense Nationale, l'Honorable Peter McKay. On the other side of the podium, the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada, the Honorable Rob Nicholson. De l'autre côté du podium, le Ministre de la Justice et Procureur Général du Canada, l'Honorable Rob Nicholson. To his left, a veteran of the Royal Canadian Navy. À sa gauche, un vétéran de la Marine Royale Canadienne, Commander Wendell Brown. To his left, a veteran of the Canadian Army. À sa gauche, un vétéran de l'armée canadienne, le lieutenant colonel Ross Como. To his left, a veteran of the Royal Canadian Air Force. À sa gauche, un vétéran de l'aviation royale du Canada, Flight Sergeant Michael Nash Kelly. And to his left, the Executive Secretary of the Royal Canadian Naval Association, Mr. Jerry Seagrist. À sa gauche, le secrétaire exécutif de la Royal Canadian Naval Association, Mr. Jerry Seguis. It is now my pleasure to ask the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada, the Honorable Rob Nicholson, to come to the podium to introduce the Minister of National Defense. Il me fait maintenant plaisir de demander au Ministre de la Justice et Procureur Général du Canada, l'Honorable Rob Nicholson, de venir au podium pour présenter le Ministre de la Défense. Well, thank you very much, uh, Senator Day, Senator McDonald. Lieutenant General Deschamps, Vice Admiral Madison, Lieutenant General Devlin, men and women of the Canadian Forces, honored veterans, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pride to be here for this historic occasion for Canada's armed forces and for Canada. Our military has established a reputation for bravery, skill, and professional professionalism in combat in both world wars and Korea and indeed over the last 200 years, as well as in current actions such as delivering aid to Haiti and in combating piracy and terrorism. Our government is committed to honoring the proud past and achievements of our military. They are to be commended for safeguarding the Canadian values of freedom, democracy, human rights, and the rule of law both at home and around the world. Our men and women in uniform can count and our, on our government to continue to ensure the strength of our military. During his tenure as Minister of National Defense since 2007, Minister McKay has worked tirelessly on behalf of our government to ensure our commitments are carried through, including increasing the defense budget by almost $8 billion to help our troops get the job done. He has championed reforms to help ill and injured personnel, including a legacy of care and new joint personal support centers across the country, including here in Halifax. He has helped equip our military through the National Shipbuilding Procurement Strategy, the new C-130J planes, tanks, and UAVs to support our mission in Afghanistan, deployments to Libya, Haiti, and emergency assistance. Mr. McKay has been a strong voice for Nova Scotia at the Cabinet table, advocating important investments such as yesterday's announcement for $73 million in infrastructure projects. He has shown leadership and sincere care and compassion for the men and women who serve our country. I am honored to serve with him as a fellow minister in our government. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my friend and colleague, the Honorable Peter McKay.
Well, thank you very much, Minister Nicholson. I'm, uh, I'm honored to have you introduce me as my seatmate in the House of Commons. I know you were here doing important work on behalf of your Department of Justice, and uh, I know that our Judge Advocate General works very closely with the Department of Justice on a number of important initiatives. Firstly, again, I want to acknowledge Senator Day, who was with us, uh, Lieutenant General Deschamps, uh, Vice Admiral Madison, Lieutenant General Devlin, who was with us as well, all of our branch chiefs, and our veterans in particular. Uh, we have extraordinary veterans in this country, as we all know, and uh, these gentlemen representing uh, all of the veterans here today are no exception. I want to uh, thank Commander Wendell G. Brown of the Navy, uh, Flight Sergeant Michael Nash Kelly, and Lieutenant mm -hmm. Colonel Ross Como, who has 58 years of service to the Crown and served in all three elements of the Canadian Forces. Gentlemen, thank you for being with us and honouring us with your presence. <laughs> Mr. Jerry Singrist as well as uh, Ray Novak, uh, Michael Smith, all of our men and women of the Canadian Forces and their families who are joining us here today, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. And uh, what a glorious morning it is, as it is every day here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be with you on what truly is a, a significant date in the proud history of the Canadian Forces. For it was on this date, August 16th, 1911, exactly 100 years ago today, King George V signed a letter granting a royal designation to what was then known as the Canadian Naval Services, and the Royal Canadian Navy was born. In the decades that followed, sailors serving out of the historic port of Halifax and many other ports around our country proudly carried that title, first under the white and blue ensigns, and later under the Canadian flag that we know today. Through two world wars and in Korea, sailors of the Royal Canadian Navy joined with the Royal Canadian Air Force and the Canadian Army serving our country with pride and distinction. Many, as we all know, made the ultimate sacrifice. They made that sacrifice while defending our shores, our people, and our nation. Behind me is a great symbol of that heritage, the last remaining Corvette warship, Her Majesty's Canadian ship Sackville, a ship that escorted Allied convoys across the Atlantic and attacked enemy submarines during the Second World War. She fought valiantly against a deadly adversary and is rightly preserved here in Halifax Harbour. And I want to thank the uh, Sackville Society for all the work that they have done in keeping this magnificent ship available to the public. Not far from here is DeWolf Park, named for the most decorated naval officer in Canadian history, Vice Admiral Harry DeWolf. Admiral DeWolf captained a number of warships and including the storied HMCS Haida, which in 1943 sank 14 enemy vessels in one calendar year. Across the harbour, we see Canadian Forces Base Shearwater, which was home to many past members of the Royal Canadian Air Force. Such reminders of our proud military history abound in this country. They are lasting and important symbols of the legacy of service of our men and women in uniform. It is a legacy, as we all know, that continues to this very day. Plus tôt cette année, les membres des forces canadiennes ont reporté les autorités de quatre provinces frappées par des feux de forêt.